For this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these crochet nesting baskets. What I'm going to do with this tutorial is actually talk you through the pattern. I would highly recommend that you use the link in the description box below to this pattern which is a free download and print it out so as we're going through you can follow along with the pattern. Particularly if you're not confident with reading patterns this will really help with your pattern reading skills. So as I say I will leave a link in the description box below. You will also need a pair of scissors, a darning needle, a 5mm hook which is a US size H and a ruler. For this particular pattern we are using Lily Sugar and Cream and this colour is Potpourri. And then before we hop into the tutorial don't forget if you like my videos then give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all of my latest ones. Also turn on that subscription bell to be notified of when my videos go live. So if we have a look at what we need, the material section of this pattern, you can see that it says that we need one cone of Lily Sugar and Cream. Um, they have used yellow but I'm using potpourri and one cone will make all three baskets. It tells you the size hook to use so as I said it's size H or 5mm and if you find that your tension is too tight then use a larger hook, if it's too loose then use a smaller hook. So change it up as you need it. The other thing that will come in really handy is a stitch marker so I'm just using one like this. And then you'll notice at the bottom here that it um, shows you all of the abbreviations for the terminology that they will be using. The best way to find out whether your pattern is written in UK terms or US terms is to look for if it says single crochet. So if it says single crochet then that is a US term. If you are working in UK terms, which I am so I'll convert this into UK terms as we're going along, you might want to just go through and just change or highlight here where it says SC along the whole of your pattern just so that you don't get confused. Okay so let's just have a look at this first part of the pattern here. It tells you the measurements for the small version, the medium and the large version. I'm going to make the large version today and then indicate where you would stop for certain rounds for the small and the medium. I just think that would be the easiest way to do it. You will also notice when it talks about the gauge that it is saying that we use two strands of yarn and um, work together. So it does tell you here that the instructions are written for the smaller size but then it also has some information for the medium and large size. And then notes here for the baskets, it says bas baskets are worked with two strands of yarn together which we have just discussed and I'm going to show you in just a moment. And then it also says that we're going to join all rounds with a slip stitch to the first single crochet which would be double crochet. So again, Again, I'll show you how to do that. So first of all I'm going to show you how to prepare your yarn and then we'll get started with our first round. Okay so here's my yarn cone and I have actually used some of this already so it's not as full as it once was. What you want to do is just take the label off first of all and then because we want to be using two strands of yarn together we want to take the one that is coming from the outside and then we want to take one that is coming from the inside. So ordinarily this would be pushed in more when you first get it but you will find a little section just here where the yarn is grabbed into. What you want to do is push the cone from the top and then pop it out the bottom just like so. And the way that we're going to be working is we'll be using the end from the outside and also the end from the inside. So as you're working you just want to stop periodically and then just loosen the yarn so pull it from around the, the edge and then also from the middle. You'll find that it actually comes out easier from the middle. I actually leave this on my lap as I'm working and I will just again just unravel it as I am going along. So go ahead and prepare your yarn and meet me back in just a moment. So first of all you want to begin by creating your slip knot and you can use whichever method you prefer with this. Go ahead and grab your hook and insert your hook into that slip knot. So I'm going to pull up on screen what the instructions are just to make this a little bit easier. So what the pattern says first of all is with two strands of yarn 
chain four, join with a slip stitch to the first chain to form a ring. So we're going to grab the yarn and pull it through. It can be a little bit tricky because this is a cotton yarn, um, so you might just have to be really aware of your tension. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through. So we have just chained four. We're now going to go ahead and insert our hook into that very first chain. Grab the yarn and pull through both loops on the hook. So now we have our foundation and this is the center circle that we're going to work into. So the first round tells us to chain one. So yarn over and pull through. And then it tells us to do eight double crochets into the ring and join. So double crochet is a UK term. In the US that's known as a single crochet. Remember the pattern is written in US terms. I am working in UK terms. So we're going to go ahead and insert our hook into the very centre circle. Grab the yarn and pull it through. You'll have two loops on the hook, technically four, but we'll just um, class this one as one collectively and the other. Yarn over and then pull through all of the loops on the hook. So that's one and again two three four and just notice that I am holding this this loose end here and I'm holding it down onto the circle so that I can crochet it in as we go along. So we'll go five, six, I'm just going to leave that down now, seven and eight. So we now have our eight double crochets and we want to slip stitch into the very first stitch. So that is just here. Insert your hook underneath that stitch, grab the yarn and pull it through and then pull straight through again. Now what you want to do here is take your stitch marker and mark the end of that round. So just put your stitch marker into that very last stitch and then we're going to move on to round two. So round two tells us to chain one, two double crochets into each double crochet around, and then join. Where it says 16 double crochets at the end, that is indicating how many stitches you will have in that round. So we want to go ahead and do two double crochets into this next stitch along. So one, and then two, so two into that stitch. And then again, one and two. So that's four stitches we have so far, five and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then our last two stitches go where our stitch marker is, so I'm going to take that out and then do 15 and 16. We're going to find where our first stitch was from this round, so just here, and slip stitch into there, and take our stitch marker and mark the last stitch from that round. So we're now on to round three, and it tells us to chain one. Now you'll notice that you'll see an asterisk and what that indicates is that you're going to repeat the pattern between those asterisks. So it says two double crochet in the next double crochet and then one double crochet in the next double crochet. So what that means is we're going to do two double crochets into this next stitch, 
one and two and then one double crochet into the next one and we're going to repeat that all the way round so it's a sequence of stitches that we're going to repeat all the way round and we'll end up with 24 stitches so again we'll repeat that two double crochets into the next stitch one and two and then one double crochet into the next stitch one and repeat again two double crochets one and two into that same stitch and then one double crochet so go ahead pause the video and repeat that same sequence until you get to your last stitch which will be where this stitch marker is pause the video and meet me back in just a moment Okay, so I've just worked my way around. I am about to do my last stitch into the last stitch from the round. So just one double crochet in there. And then I'm going to join to my very first double crochet from this round. So it's just here. Insert the hook and slip stitch to join. Then going to go ahead and take my stitch marker and mark that last stitch so that I know where to finish my next round. So this next section of the pattern is where it changes slightly. So for the small version, you would do this set of instructions, but for the medium and large versions, you would move on to this set of instructions. What I'm going to do is move on to this bit of uh, set of instructions, but I hope that this video will kind of give you the knowledge and the skills that you need in order to complete this round. It's basically the same as what we have just done, but you'll do two double crochets into the first double crochet and then one double crochet into the next five stitches. So for me, and if you're following along with me, we're going to move on to this fourth round just here and we're going to do a chain one, two double crochets into the next double crochet, remember I'm working in UK terms so converting this, and then one double crochet into the next two stitches and we're going to repeat that all the way round until we have 32 stitches. So now we're going to chain one and then we're going to do two double crochets into this next stitch, one and two and then one double crochet into the next two stitches. So that's the first one, we'll move across to the next stitch and do our second one. So it's a four stitch repeat here that we're doing. So now we're going to repeat that again, two double crochets into the next stitch, one and two. And one double crochet into the next two stitches, so one, and two. So go ahead, pause the video, work that same sequence, two double crochets into the first stitch and then one double crochet into the next two stitches. Pause the video, work your way round until you get to this last stitch and I'll show you how to move on to the next row. I've worked my way round, I'm about to do my last stitch, just where this stitch marker is and I'm going to connect my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. I'm going to mark the end of my row again and then we'll move on to the fifth round. So what we want to do here is chain one and this time the pattern repeat is going to be two double crochets into the next stitch and then one double crochet into the next three stitches. So we're working in a, a five stitch repeat this time and we're going to end up with 40 double crochets. So two double crochets, one and two into that first stitch and then we're going to do three double crochets one, next stitch, two, next stitch, three. So we'll repeat that again. Two double crochets, one and two, and then one double crochet into the next three stitches. One, 
two and three. So go ahead, pause the video, work your way round to your stitch marker and meet me back in just a moment. Okay, so I am just going to do my last stitch in this row five. And then I'm going to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch and mark the end of that round. So if you're doing the medium version, you will stop at this point, skip the next round and then come back to me. But we're going to add one more round so that we can make this particular one a little bit larger. So now what we're going to do is chain one and we're going to do two double crochets in the first stitch and then one double crochet into the next four stitches. So this pattern repeat is going to be six stitches in total. So we'll go into that first stitch and do two double crochets. One and two and then one double crochet into the next four stitches. One two, three, and four. We shall repeat that again. So two double crochets into the next stitch, one and two, and then one double crochet into the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. So go ahead, repeat that pattern repeat all the way round, two double crochets in one stitch, and then one double crochet into the next four stitches until you have 48 stitches in total. Pause the video and meet me back at your stitch marker. Okay, again, I've come to the end of my round. I'm going to do my last stitch where my stitch marker is, and I'm going to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. Okay, so here's where we are going to start turning this into a bowl. So at the moment, this is our base, and then we're going to work up the side of the basket. So you, again, want to march, mark your stitch marker. And if you're doing a small version of this basket, your rounds are going to consist of 28 stitches. If you're doing the me medium version, your rounds will consist of 40 stitches. And if you're doing the large version like me, your rounds will consist of 48 stitches. But the stitches that we are doing are exactly the same. It's just the amount that's going to be different. So let's have a look at the pattern. So what it says here is chain one and working into the back loops only um, one double crochet into each double crochet around and then join. So as I say, this is where we're going to be actually creating the shape of the bowl. So you want to chain one as it suggests, and then we're going to work into the back loops only of this stitch. So as you turn your stitches onto the side, or your work onto the side, you see these V's all the way across. If you're going into that stitch like we have been doing, you will have two loops on your hook. It looks like you have two sections there. So this time we are just going into the back loop, so the one that's furthest away from you, and then do your double crochet the same as you have been doing. And what this will do is we'll, it will create that curve in your work, so your um, basket will actually start to work up like this. So again, go into the back loop and do your double crochet and into your back loop and again and that is how simple this round is you're going to do your double crochets into every stitch all the way around just working into the back loop pause the video and meet me back at the stitch marker okay so I have come to the end of this round I'm just going to do my last stitch and then join my rounds with a slip stitch. And then mark my last stitch again, as always. And what we're going to do now is just super, super simple, chain one, 
and you are going to double crochet all the way around into both loops just in every single stitch. So it's literally just one double crochet into both loops, the back and the front loop, and it's literally as simple as that. So the pattern actually says to work up until you have the edge measuring three and three quarter inches or nine and a half centimeters. For me, that is around 11 rows. So go ahead, pause the video, please make sure that you are using your stitch markers correctly, but pause the video, work your sides, and then meet me back in just a moment. Okay, so we're now on this section of the pattern because I've done my rounds of double crochet and I've worked it to three and three quarter inches or nine, cent nine and a half centimeters. Now I'm going to move on to this next section. So it says we're going to chain one, working from the left to the right instead of right to the left. Obviously, if you're doing the left-hand version, then you're just going to flip that around. And it says work one reverse um, single crochet, which is double crochet, in each double crochet around and join. So we're just basically going to do the crab stitch or the reverse double crochet. So I'll demonstrate that to you now. So here is my basket. If I just grab my... Um, ruler you can see it's like just over nine centimeters just under three and three quarter inches um, and that's fine for me I'm just going to leave it as that so you can um, choose to whichever but this has worked out to be 11 rows so what we're going to do now is I've joined the last round and I've put my stitch marker into the next stitch because we're going to be working our way backwards and what you want to do here you might want to turn your work onto the side we're going to insert our hook into that stitch which is behind the one that we're working in grab the yarn and pull it through and then yarn over and pull through both of those stitches go to the next one insert the hook grab the yarn and pull it through and grab the yarn and pull it through this is going to be a little bit more tricky but just take your time with it and you'll st soon pick up the method so you have to kind of twist your hook round insert it into that stitch grab the yarn pull it through and then yarn over pull through those loops on the hook so you can see it's starting to make this really nice uh, like wave of a stitch. So go ahead and do that all the way around the top of your basket. Pause the video and meet me back in your last stitch and I'll show you how to finish off. Okay, so I've just worked my way all the way around and it creates this beautiful um, finish to the basket. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert my hook into the base of this first stitch grab the yarn and pull it through all of the stitches, tighten that up a little bit and then chain one, you're going to take your scissors and snip off the yarn and then you can pull that out and then all that's left to do is to weave in your ends and you want to weave them in on the inside of the basket. So there you go, that is the nesting basket tutorial. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. I'll leave all the links in the description box below of where you can find the pattern and the yarn details as well. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't subscribed already and I shall see you again in my next video. Bye.